welcome to the Historian Knits podcast. My name is Vanessa. I am coming to you from Louisville, Colorado. I still have a hard time saying that. Um, we just moved here over a month ago, a month and a half ago, and I live here with my husband, our daughter, and our dog. And um, where you can find me, you can find me on Instagram as a Historian Knits, um, as well as on Ravelry as a Historian Knits. And um, we also have a podcast group on Ravelry where you will find uh, knit alongs, um, show notes. You can also find the show notes down there in the description bar. And if you need to contact me regarding anything, um, you could always email me at ahistorianknits at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> so we have one knit along going on right now, and it ends at the end of the month, this month, uh, August 31st, which is the Ups and Downs uh, Socks Cow. Uh, the Ups and Downs Socks are my first knitting pattern on Ravelry. So uh, if you get a pair of those done by the end of the month, you could get inter entered into winning a prize. And all of that information is in the podcast group. So go ahead and check that out. So that is it for administrative stuff for now that I could think of. Yeah. So let's get into finished objects. So I'm wearing one right now, but I will be talking about the cross stitch first. Um, and then we'll talk about this one because I'm in love with this one. <laughs> so in terms of, sorry, I have all of my finished objects on this side. In terms of finished objects, um, I, I showed this off, was it the last time I podcasted it? I can't remember now. But I went to a yarn store, yarn slash cross stitching store in Wyoming. And I picked this one up. And I really wanted to make this one. And since then, I have made it. It took me like a week. And these are the kind of projects I like in terms of cross stitching. Um, I'll show you the other one that I'm kind of in gonna be in timeout for a little bit because <laughs> I just I don't have the patience for it right now but this one took me about a week and uh, I changed some of the stuff on it this is just um, an Ada that I bought at Joann's I think it was and I just decided to use it for this of course it has to be like ironed a little bit I think it's a little bit wrinkly but anyway I washed it out um, like I do my knitting because why not just decided to wash it anyway but I did change a couple of things. So you'll see here in the picture, um, the flowers are blue and then the candy corn has like a brown to it. And then um, it has little button eyes and look at the nose right there. It's kind of an upside down kind of triangle. Well, I changed it a little bit. <laughs> I changed the nose, um, kind of how I traditionally like jack-o'-lanterns with their noses like this. Um, the buttons were actually too small for my needles, so I decided not to use them, um, which is fine. And then I did um, the orange instead of the brown for the candy corn, and then um, purple flowers instead of the blue. So I really, really, really like it um, in terms of what I'm going to do with it. So on here it shows that they have it finished like a little pillow, and I think I'm going to try to do that. Um, I do have fabric I could use for the back. And then I'll have to figure out how to put kind of the little, a little, the little decorative stuff on there, which I've never done before. I don't know if I should sew it or glue it. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But uh, I really kind of like this little pillow. Kind of use it on uh, doorknobs and stuff like that just for decoration. So that is my cross stitch for, um, work in progress finish object. And I do have one more that I've been working on for a very, very long time. So. I have been working on this one for over a year, probably two years. It's been a long time. And this is a pattern by um, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery .com. So this was a kit that they had. And if you've seen my podcast throughout the year, you, you've already <coughs> seen this one. The dog has had spark. Hold on. Maybe. Okay, so this was a kit. This was supposed to be a uh, National Parks. Um, and this is actually on a linen, which is uh, one of the reasons I find it really frustrating. I don't like cross stitching on linen. Apparently it's supposed to be like fancier. I'm a very novice cross stitcher. So that's just what I heard. It's supposed to be fancy, um, but it's really hard to see. Um, the fabric is beautiful, but this is, it's supposed to have, I believe six little parks. 
and then it's supposed to have like um, a border around it. So I got one of them done. And this has taken me a very long time. There we go. A very long, long time to complete. And it's not perfect by any means, uh, but it's done. And I think I need a little bit of a break from this project for a while because it took me forever to complete. Um, there's so many different colors in there and it just, <laughs> it was enjoyable when I was finished with it, basically. So I need a couple more of these projects before I get back to this one. So that is my other, my other whip that's going to be going um, in hibernation for a little bit. So I'll probably be stitching up a Christmas present next for a friend, actually a friend and her husband. So that might be my up next in terms of um, cross stitching. And I just noticed that I didn't sign it. I always, I'm so bad about that. I need to sign it and uh, put the date on it of when I finish this. But that's my next, hopefully maybe next time my podcast, you'll see a little pillow out of this. We'll see. Okay, so there is the cross stitch. Now for the knitted finish objects, which let me adjust the camera a little bit. I have uh, a few, namely this one right here. So you didn't even get to see this as a work in progress because it took me like nine days to complete. So last time I showed, uh, or I podcasted, I showed you a gift that we got from uh, our friend Susanna up in Calgary. And she was so kind, she actually gifted me the pattern because I was complimenting of how much I would love to make this. And I did. I loved it. It took me like nine days um, to make this. And a little addition. Tassels. We'll talk about the whole tassel situation in a minute. So this is the Agent 99 Cow by Don Maurer. And... Um, I made this out of rock and string creations. Um, if you remember when I was, when we had moved out of our house, I was living with my mom for a while, my parents, and um, I went to the local yarn shop and I bought this can of yarn. So yeah, basically less than two months and I've already used it. So this is worsted weights and um, I love it. It's called Happy Dance. So obviously the tassel is an addition that I wanted to put on it and I actually made a little lobster claw so I could actually take it off when I block it or if I don't want to wear the tassel I could just take it off so basically it almost used a whole let me show you how much I have left so kind of a good chunk left um, but the pro the actual pattern is made for either a skein or a skein and a half and I wanted to use as much as possible so if I would have just stopped with the skein amount, it would have been right here. So basically I did an extra, an extra repeat of the pattern, of the stockinette section anyway. So yeah, basically it's a seed, seed stitch and stockinette. And it is perfect, it's a cow. Um, you kind of increase in the front to kind of give it that you can see here the pointed kind of kerchief or bandana look and I love how easy it is to style just put it on and just basically you're done um, I am gonna take it off because it's a little warm and um, this is actually still a little damp I just blocked it and it's taking forever to dry because it's worsted weight so I'm gonna have to put it outside for a little bit for it to dry, but I really, really love it. I really, really recommend this pattern. It's super quick, it's easy, it's great for a gift knit, um, and it's just really squishy, and I love it. And thank you, Susanna, for giving me that pattern. It's just, I see myself making more of these in the future. So that is one. Oh, I should show you the, um, the label. So it's Rock and String Creations, and um, this is in her Wayward, Base, which is worsted weight and it's 100% superwash merino and uh, it's her happy dance colorway so on to the next one I do have another cow so last time um, we'll talk about tassels in a minute too last time I showed off the hats that I made the alpaca hats and it was um, kind of a stranded 
uh, alpaca hat and the little alpacas in the pattern were made out of actual alpaca. <laughs> Um, and I had a bunch of this left. I don't have much of it now, but I had a bunch of this left and I was asking you guys to give me ideas of what I should do with it. And uh, Alyssa recommended that I make a cow out of it. There are several patterns on Ravelry that you can use worsted weight, which is what this is, uh, and make a cow. I think I had 63 grams left. So I had a lot left. Um, so I went on Ravelry. I was looking for different... Um, patterns that I could make with this kind of um, weight of yarn and I found the Waverly Weekend Cal which is a free pattern on Ravelry and it's super cute. Most of them are one color but I decided to do two colors just because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough um, and by the looks of this I probably wouldn't have enough for this. Um, it's actually supposed to be five, uh, six Six repeats of the pattern, I only did five, because again, I wasn't going to have enough yarn. So basically it's a cow, it's lace, I've blocked it already, let me kind of show it to you on. Um, again, super, I got this done in two days. This was done in two days. So you could gift knit it for sure, um, it's really soft, I know some people find alpaca a little scratchy, um, but I really think it's soft. and. Um, Kind of see the lace work here. And the other color I used was actually leftovers from a hat that I made my husband. Um, and this is uh, the Gnome Acres 221B Baker Street. So I decided to add a little bit of color. So basically this, this cow is like memories because I got this during our yarn crawl last year with my friend Kristen. And then um, the, the blue is my, my husband. So kind of two warm memories for me to wear when it gets really, really cold, because <laughs> alpaca is very warm. So I really love this pattern. Again, I would totally recommend it, and it's free, so that's even better, right? Um, super easy to follow, super intuitive. Again, got it done in two days. Two days. And that was just, you know, watching podcasts. Not even all day, like just an hour or two um, at a time. So... Then I will be talk. Let me talk about the the tassel situation for a minute. Just lost some yarn. <laughs> oh well. Um, so another thing that I had questions on last time was um, tassels. So I used this the loom that I had to make this little tassel, which is perfect for this little kind of tassel. But I was wondering, you know, in terms of making bigger tassels, like what? Um, it's a little wild. <laughs> so what I could do to make bear tassels. And I'm slowly working my way up to getting actually decent looking tassels. So um, I believe it was Karen that recommended using my cell phone to make a tassel. Um, so I used basically the same concept. Actually, let me rewind. Alyssa recommended that I watch this tutorial on making tassels. Um, and then the, the person in the video made tassels with bulky or chunky weight yarn and embroidery floss, which I thought was really fun. Um, I will post a tutorial in the show notes, but basically the concept is the same. You wrap it around and then you kind of uh, put a string at the top and then wrap it around here and then cut the, the tutorial will explain it better <laughs> than I just did. But basically the concept is the same, only I had to find something that would be the right size for a bigger tassel. So I used my, my cell phone, my smartphone, and I just basically just wrapped it and Karen recommended that. So I made this tassel using my cell phone. So I'll probably just use this as a, maybe a Christmas ornament. Maybe I'll add to my Christmas ornament pile that I'm completely neglecting um, to make. But I thought this was really fun and it worked out really well. I'm gonna try to figure out how I can make this like a little tighter at the top here. I'm not really sure. Maybe if I tie it down like that, I don't know. But more experimentation. I just really thought this was fun and super, super brushing. So that was a fun little experiment. That's kind of what I used the rest of this yarn for, to kind of experiment for that. So I thought that was really fun. So tassel making continues. <laughs> oh, I have a couple more um, finished objects. I finished the baby sweater, the Harvest Cardigan by, oh, I forgot to tell you the, um, the maker of the Waverly Weekend. Cow, and that was uh, Donna Brooks. 
And so I have these two left over. This was um, No Makers Decepticons in her DK White, and she's no longer dying yarn. Um, but you might be able to find it on a D stash on Ravelry. But I had this extra skein, and I was I was gonna I think initially I was gonna make a hat for my husband out of it, but um, he didn't really like the color. So uh, I had kind of this skein sitting in my stash for a while, and I decided to make it into a little baby cardigan. Um, this is the, as I said before, the Harvest Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. Super easy to knit it up. I'm actually, I actually bought some yarn to buy, make one for myself because I really like the construction of it. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I made the smallest size um, and I used uh, DK weight. I forget the needle size I used. No, I don't remember. Um, but basically I just worked it out so I could use DK instead of the worsted, which is what they called for. So this is the back. I really kind of like the X pattern there. This was completely how it pulled. So I thought that was kind of fun. But the reason I made it this color for this particular baby is because um, her parents, she was just born a couple of days ago. So I'm going to be sending it out as soon as it gets completely dry. So it's still a little damp. But her parents are big Halloween fans. So I thought this was very... Halloweeny, and I bought her, I don't know where it is now, a little um, onesie that has little black cats on it because they have a black cat. So I thought that was perfect. So this is going to its new home, hopefully tomorrow if it gets dried enough. Um, super easy pattern, completely recommended. Love it. We'll do it again if I have to make another baby sweater for somebody. Not have to make, if I want to make another baby sweater for somebody. And my last finished object, um, half finished object. Is a sock. So um, you saw last time you saw it was down here by this little gummy bear, coffee gummy bear. No, I can't get it to work. Here we go. <laughs> this little coffee gummy bear by um, she's pitter patter polymer on Etsy, and it's super lightweight, super adorable. But that's the last time you saw it was down here. So since then I have made progress. <laughs> I finished the sock. And this is in uh, Nomadic Yarns uh, Succulents. And I did uh, just a regular vanilla stockinette sock, no pattern. Um, I did use the Afterthought Heel, uh, the Kirby Warby Afterthought, Afterthought Heel. Um, so I got one sock finish. My plan is to have these done by the end of the month. Um, I will show you the second one. So the second one I have uh, underway. I've already, the heel is already here. So I'm on the foot right now. Hoping to get this done by the end of the week, possibly. Um, that way I could have these off my needles. I was planning on doing the um, Knit Girls sock, self-striping monthly sock along. But it looks like next month I don't have any of those dyers. So I think I'm going to skip September and just try to finish up the socks I have. <laughs> and then kind of jump on uh, in October. I think uh, I do have one of the socks in October but I'm really trying not to buy things which is going to seem ridiculous after well a lot of the stuff I've purchased before so um, and then I have more stuff that I'm not going to show you today that I'll show you next time because it's just gonna like you don't want to see a whole hour of acquisitions because that's just ridiculous but um, some of the stuff was gifted to me as well from my mother who has um, discovered nitpicks so she decided that she needs to buy all the things um, so now I'm on my second sock, and that is, well, kind of getting into whips since I'm already talking about whips. I'm only going to show you two more whips because um, I kind of have been putting a row here and there, but it's not much to show you. But I do want to show you my, my still water cardigan again, and it's, <laughs> it's getting a little ridiculous. It's not fitting in this bag, but it's going to have to fit in this bag because I don't really want to change it until I'm actually done with it. So last time you saw this, uh, this is a pattern by Marie Green. It's the Stillwater Cardigan, and um, it has been on my needles for quite a long time. And so um, basically I have three, four, three, four, three or four garments on my needles right now. And my goal is to basically get one done, then work on, any, on the other one until it's done. Because basically, apparently I just got distracted and just started casting everything on. Okay, so the still water, last time you saw it, it just was a body. Now it has a sleeve. 
and I started on the other sleeve. And it's not really trying. Oh, here we go. That one's by Charmed and Dangerous. But yeah, and it's all, again, it's all like smushed up. And I'm a little bit worried because I was looking at one of the knitting books that I got from the library and it says that if your, your sweaters curl like this for the ribbing that you didn't pick up enough stitches. So I'm hoping with blocking this will be fine and it doesn't curl up like this because that would really be a bummer and I'm not taking that out. <laughs> so it's just going to have to just be what it is. Um, but it has this kind of faux cable on the side, which again will look better when I block it. Uh, and it's very, just very warm. Um, the yarn is naturally Nazareth in the worsted weight. And the color is Moonlight. And I still have two more, two more skeins of it. So I'm probably going to need, I'm pretty close to finishing this one. So I might need to uh, wind one up and then I'll probably have an extra. So I'm not gonna really sure what I'm going to do with that. But yep. So I have one I'm done. Just need to get the other one done. And I've been watching um, some Netflix. And this is just basically mindless knitting. I've been using the 12-inch um, circulars for the arms, which whoever recommended that, I know it was one of you recommended doing that is has been such a fast experience to get your sleeves done um, with the 12 inch circulars so thank you for whoever just suggested that it has been great so I will deal I will put this aside and deal with stuffing it in the bag later <laughs> the other one I wanted to show you was a new cast on and um, I know like we were talking about last time how my whip started control and I totally like I know that and there actually, there is work that is going into those whips, but there are some things that I got to get done before Christmas. I have to make my husband a scarf that I promised with him. I got to finish, um, or I got to make my mom some socks and then um, some slippers, which I'm hoping to get a pair done before she gets here in September. And uh, yeah, so there's some Christmas presents that I have to get done, but not many, like less than a handful of Christmas presents that I got to get done. Um, but this one's actually knitting up pretty quickly because it's it's sport weight. But I don't know. Maybe the pattern is just quick. But it's living in my uh, used so and so bag. She's on Etsy, and I, I just love this bag. And um, this is going to be the bevel bevel scarf. Um, the designer is Jared Flood, and. Um, I bought these yarns. You guys have seen these yarns. I bought them um, in the spring. I think in the spring when I went to a fiber optic with my friend. So basically this requires four different colors. And um, right now, I'll just show you the colors that um, I've, I've actually completed. So basically what happens here is that, um, and this is a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to give too much away, but it's, it's a chevron. You could go on Ravelry and look how it kind of knits up. It's a chevron. Um, so it does a section of the blue here. I have to do about, I don't even know, 10 more garter ridges. And then I go on to the gray and then I go on to a green and then I go on to kind of this bluish green here. So it's basically a chevron um, rectangle. And then you pick up around the sides and the bottom with the gray. So it's gonna have a border at the end. So basically, um, I just started this yesterday and um, it's going by pretty quickly. It's very intuitive. There's up to, until you finish the whole thing to get to the end of the pattern, um, it's just two rows back and forth. So it's a right side and a wrong side. And then you just do the same thing every, and then you just switch colors. So it's, it's not a very hard pattern and it's gonna look really pretty. And I know they're not the most exciting colors, but it's something my husband would wear. Um, he doesn't like bright colors. He likes very um, kind of dark, neutral colors. Um, so it's, it's not causing me a lot of pain quite yet to knit this. <laughs> um, these are not my colors. I would never pick these for myself, but at least the idea that I get to switch colors every, you know, 30 some rows makes me happy <laughs> and I could do it. 
So the colors, these are all going to be fiber optic yarns in the sport weight. Um, there's a fingering weight and a DK weight of the pattern. I'm doing the fingering, but just with the sport. So it's just going to be a little bit bigger than the fingering. Nothing really changes there. So what I have so far, um, in terms of the yarns, uh, this color right here is called Nevermore. And again, these are all fiber optic yarns. Uh, this one's called, the gray one's called Graphite. And then the blue one is called Midnight Rendezvous. Let's see there. And then after the blue, it's going to go into gray and then go into green, which is Ivy League. And then it's going to go back to this one. So it's just basically repeats. So again, this is a very easy one to take with you. Um, oh, and I should mention my little pizza. The Sucre Sucre Miniatures. It's just so realistic. It's amazing. But yeah, um, I don't think I have anything else to say about this. Not really a whole lot going on. I mean, it's very intuitive. Um, scarves, I don't find that interesting to knit, but he wouldn't knit, he wouldn't wear a shawl or anything like that. So I think we're going to, maybe someday I'll get him to wear a shawl. So we're going to start with the scarf first and then kind of work our way up to um, a shawl. So that is it for my whips. Um, it's going to be a, a shorter episode, it seems, um, which is fine. <laughs> I do have some acquisitions, and these have these were a while ago. I just, again, I don't want to, like, burden you with acquisitions. So they're down here. So let me reach over. So I have been looking for a handbag for quite a while, and I haven't really liked any of them. Sorry, it's all messed up. <laughs> I haven't really liked any of the ones that I see in the store and um, nor online and I don't know. I just couldn't find the right size of handbag. And I wanted one that could be um, used on the shoulder as well as kind of a crossover body one. So I saw on um, Home Row, uh, Home Row Fiber Co. She has an Instagram and um, Lovely project bags, but I don't really need any project bags at the point at this point. But she did have this posted on one of her Instagram pictures, and um, they're knitting needles. Yeah, so it's not like completely obvious that it's knitting. Like most people will probably not, not even notice that these these are knitting needles. But the fact that I know makes me happy. Um, so it's just kind of plain but also kind of interesting at the same time. So I'm just, yep, I'm loving that. I bought that for myself. And then um, she also had pins. And I couldn't pass this one up. It's like, I love that design. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love that design, and it's just really cool. She also has um, prints of this particular design, which I'm going to get someday for when we get our house. Um, so I'll probably be sticking this on that bag that you just saw. Um, so I thought this was really cool. So Felici. <laughs> My mom was ordering some yarn on Nip Nipix, and um, she decided that I needed more yarn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I have... Several of each, but I'll show you the ones that I got. Um, this one's Golden Hour, which I'm dying to knit with this one, but no more, no more for now. I cannot cast anymore. This one's Dance Party. And these are all self striping if you've never heard of Felici, and they're pretty inexpensive. Um, this one's Ice Cream Truck. Let's see, I think I got one more. Right? No. <laughs> this one's sour candy. So I got those to keep me busy for the next 20 years. And then I also made a purchase on Knit Picks. So after I was making that um, harvest cardigan, I really enjoyed it and I thought this would be such a squishy yarn to work with. Or such a squishy sweater to have. There we go. So I was looking at Knit Picks, and this is their monthly uh, special. They have usually 20% off their monthly special yarn that they have. Um, so I bought a sweater quantities of this 
yarn. It's the Wool of the Andes Superwash, and this is in their Bittersweet Heather. So it's actually, it looks like a black, but it's actually a super dark brown. So I thought this would be really good, soft, smushy sweater. Um, so that'll be sometime in the future. And then my last acquisitions that I'm going to show you for the moment is um, this one. And I'm not going to take it back out of the bag because I'm just going to leave it in here for a while until I want to knit it. But this was uh, part of the uh, Tits Collective um, charity program that went on in the month of July. And um, I had ordered this particular one. This is um, the graffiti version. And it's Haverland. And she's not selling this anymore because kind of that time period is over. And this is actually a uh, died to order. So it actually got, got here in either early August, early to mid August. So um, can't order this anymore. But she does have a bunch of other really cool self striping socks in her shop if you want to check her out on Etsy. But yeah, so I got another more self striping yarn. So I don't have enough of that. Um, so yeah, those are my acquisitions. Now we're going to talk a little bit about etc. And um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about what's going on in my life. Let me see if I can pick up some knitting while I'm doing this, right? Let's see if I'm actually able to do th two things at once. Um, so Amelia started school last week. She went three days last week, and then she has her first full week this week. So she's really enjoying it. Um, she's making new friends. Um, yeah. So far, so good. So, um, no problems. She hasn't been really anxious anymore, which is good. She kind of found some people to talk to. In terms of uh, my job situation, I had an interview a couple of weeks ago. And they I didn't get the job, but they recommended that I apply for other positions. So, who knows, maybe. Um, I do have another interview. I do have another interview. Oh God, apparently I cannot multitask people. Um, I have another interview this Thursday. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Just keep applying places and see if something happens. Um, in terms of living in Colorado, we really love it so far. Every weekend we do something different, hiking, outdoorsy, kind of checking out the place. And this past weekend we went on a really fun hike along this, um, I guess it's technically a stream. I don't know if it's a river, but I will, sh I, you should have seen some images of that at the beginning, um, as well as some like local wildflowers, which are just amazing. And there's so many sunflowers here. It's like craziness. Um, back in Ohio, yeah, people grew sunflowers, but they're like, they're like the weeds here. Like they're all over the side of the road. It's just so cool to see all of those sunflowers everywhere. Um, so, so far we really love living in Colorado. I did go to a knit night last Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to go this Wednesday because we have something for Amelia's school lined up. Uh, they have an open house, so we might be able, we might have to go to that instead of going to knit night, which is kind of a bummer. But they're super nice. Um, very, uh, there's, it's actually a pretty big group. They have like 15 people that regularly go. Uh, this past week, apparently several of them were out of town for work and vacation. So there weren't as many, there were about, you know, six, seven, which is still huge to me. Um, but yeah, it's nice to actually meet some local knitters to the area. And, um, yeah, that's basically everything that's going on here. Um, it's becoming pretty routine at this point, kind of taking Amelia to school and then John going to work and then me looking for jobs. Um, so yeah, everything's going well. So Amelia did finally get back her pottery from that pottery class she took a couple of weeks ago. Actually, it was like a month ago, but it took him forever to fire up pottery. But anyway, she made a little video that I will put at the end for Amelia's Corner. And I think that's it for this podcast. So I will see you in a couple of weeks and um, stay tuned for Amelia's Corner.
Happy knitting! Hi, it's Amelia, and our dog is playing with a toy, but I have my pottery. I just got it yesterday, and um, I'll show you what they are. So this one, it's from the wheel. Um, yeah, we were learning things on the wheel, and so I just made a little project. It fell a bit, but I like it that way. It's for my Grammy and Papa too, so yeah. And this is just a little flower I made for decoration. It's for my grandma, and the glaze faded a bit, but it's okay. And I have a coil pot. I made it for my mom, and she can put things in it, see? And then I have a little poster for our coffee table so we can put our drinks on it. And now I have a few things for my best friend. I have a little statue of a dog because we both really like dogs. And I have a little pendant for her. And I also have one that's matching for me. And then I have um, a little ring that's too small. And, she, and I'm going to give it to my other friend. And so she can put it on a necklace and wear it because it's too small. So that's all my pottery. Bye.